right, so good afternoon, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Eat, Drink, Travel's virtual vacation to Adair Manor in Ireland. We are at a special time today, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard, uh, because we actually have a cocktail uh, demonstration that we're going to get from Adair Manor, and um, we're going to have some fun with some gin, I understand. Uh, but before we get started, if you can put in the chat uh, where you are joining us from, because I see we have participants entering. So welcome, welcome, and please share with us uh, where, you're, where you're at today or this evening. <laughs> Everybody's shy today. I think they are. Oh, um, there we go. We were just talking about the weather in Florida. We could do with a bit of it here in Ireland, if you wouldn't mind sending some over. <laughs> Ann Arbor. So Welcome. Welcome. Denver. Got Wisconsin too. Nice, nice. People are shy today. <laughs> Who's ready for some cocktails? <laughs> I am, but I have my my water here, so I don't. <laughs> hey, it's five o'clock somewhere. It's all good. I almost, I almost pulled out my rosé, but I figured we got to hold off until we head over to France for that. <laughs> Teresa, where in Ohio are you calling in from? I went to two high schools and college in Ohio. I'm curious. Teresa didn't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Or doesn't want to share. That's okay if you don't want to share. <laughs> Um, my mom went to college at the old um, Cleveland State. Oh, I went to mm -hmm. Miami of Ohio, which was a college before Florida was even a state. So <laughs> well, there you so go. I went, to Eastern, I went to Eastern Michigan. So we were in the same conference. Yeah, that <laughs> conference. Good old that conference. And I got all the perks of Ann Arbor living in Ypsilanti. There you go. My son's girlfriend's going to U of M while he's going to state in the fall. So we're going to have quite the fun discussion. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be fun. Okay. And with that, I think we are a little bit past the top of the hour. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. For those of you who are new to the Eat, Drink, Travel uh, webinars, I am Candace Stearns, and I am joined with um, three of my other um, four compadres who put together this virtual vacation uh, slash webinar series that we've been running since um, the pandemic started. It started out of a love for travel, and when those of us travel advisors were no longer able to uh, fly freely about the globe, we decided we would start taking our um, tours virtually. So we've been doing that since um, late April of last year, and we've had so much fun and so much interaction that we um, have continued to do this so that those of you that are part of our meetup groups um, and may not be able to meet uh, in person together, um, we can meet every couple of weeks virtually. I will introduce Heidi Thies from Benvenuto Travel. So say hi, Heidi. Hello, hello. She is in the uh, Denver, Colorado area. We have Maria Stephanopoulos, who is in the Tampa Bay area from Ingenious hello. Travel. Say hi, yeah. And then we have Angela Urshawood from uh, the Lake Country area of Milwaukee-ish type Wisconsin area. So, hi there. So uh, we are the uh, travel advisors who put together these different uh, locations. And um, today we're going to be visiting uh, Ireland in Adair Manor. But before we introduce uh, Jillian and Carol, 
Uh, I just wanted to pop up here and we will put this in the chat so that you can copy it and have it for future use. But um, we can be found on YouTube and private Facebook groups. We have a, a YouTube channel called Take a Virtual Vacation and another one called Eat, Drink, Travel. Uh, and then we have meetup groups all around the country. So um, I know Maria's going to be hosting a, um, I think a brewery, a, a, a beer tasting. Is that accurate in July, Maria? So we're going to be going to a brew house in New Tampa. And so that will be coming be, out soon. Yeah, and I'm going to be... Um, uh, hooking up with Brown Iron Brew House here locally as well, and we're going to be featuring Germany, and so stay tuned for that date coming. Um, but I know the different areas in um, Lake Country, Wisconsin, and Heidi and Denver, I do believe a lot of the restrictions are starting to lift, so we'll be hosting in-person meetings for you guys to come to that way as well. Oh, that's not right. Let me get there. And I'm going to now <clears throat> stop my sharing and turn this over to um, Jillian. So if Jillian, are you able to grab the screen? I think we practiced this earlier. Can do. I hope everybody's doing well today. Uh, so myself and Ariel are delighted to have this time with you to introduce you to Adair Manor in Ireland. Um, so first and foremost, what we're going to do is give you a little, I suppose, taster of the property. And by doing that, we're going to show you a quick video. So just bear with me one second and hopefully the technology works. You might want to turn up your um, volume just to, to get the best impact from your side. Enjoy. <laughs> That is just to give you a little taster and what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to show you I'm going to actually bring you through um, a quick presentation because obviously the video can only show you so much but we want to bring dive deeper and give you a little closer look at everything the resort has to offer and obviously we'll take some questions and answers at the end if you would like and um, so I suppose the biggest part for Adair Manor is we actually were bought by an Irish family about six years ago. Uh, so very local to Adair and uh, they, they live very close to the property. And we were very fortunate because they actually closed the property for two entire years. And it went one of the largest investments ever to be seen in Ireland. So it's quite phenomenal what they did. Um, over the course of the two years, I think I, I, you know, at one time we had about 900 construction workers on the property just to make sure that it was all completed on time. It was quite phenomenal. Um, but I suppose, first of all, to tell you where we are. So we're in the southwest of Ireland uh, on the Wild Atlantic Way, which is one of the, lo the longest uh, coastal routes in the world. It's two and a half thousand kilometers long and it goes from the very tip of Ireland at the north in Donegal right down to the bottom, my home county down in County Cork. And it's just the most incredible drive. And it's not something that you can do in one week in Ireland. And um, you definitely need a little bit longer to come more than once. 
So to get to Adair, you would either fly into Shannon Airport, which is our closest airport. It's about a 30 minute drive from the property or alternatively you can fly into the capital, which will be Dublin. And Adair is literally all motorway across the country from Dublin airport. So it takes about two and a half hours by car. Um, so either way, you know, the, the drives all the way down to Adair are just incredible. Um, so just to kind of give you a little idea of, you know, what's around Adair. Uh, so our closest city, it's at the top left hand side of your screen, it's called Limerick. So it's quite a vibrant city. It's about a 10, 15 minute drive from the property. And there's huge amounts to do and see, you know, obviously on property. But when you get that time to get off property, and we do recommend it, there's beautiful castles to visit. Um, obviously, we showcased the Cliffs of Moher at the very start, so that's iconic to Ireland. That's about an hour and a half's drive and just it's breathtaking to go to the cliffs. Um, you can either view it from on top and you can see down to the ocean below, or you can actually view it, go out in a boat now and look up at the cliffs, which is just as spectacular. Um, then you have Foyne's Flying Boat Museum, where the first flying boat landed transatlantic into Ireland. That's about a half an hour's drive from Adair. And then you have beautiful uh, local markets that do artisan stalls uh, with live music, and they're just my absolute favourite. But a huge thing for Adair Manor is actually the village that we're located in called Adair. So it's known as one of the most picturesque villages in Ireland. Now I have to agree because I live here, so I am slightly biased about it to be fair, but beautiful catch cottages, you've great pubs, not as good as Ariel's taproom bar here, by the way, which we'll get, we'll get into further detail, um, but incredible restaurants. So if you want to go down and, you know, I suppose experience the culinary um, experience down in Adair or just to meet the locals, it's, you know, amazing to do that. So the gates of Adair Manor are actually in the village of Adair, but because we're on 842 acres of land, it does take about 10 minutes to walk up from the village, but we have complimentary house cars um, to transport you around if needs be. To do the most incredible arrival to the property, these ladies can arrange this for you, a horse and hound welcome. So they'll greet you at the front gates of the hotel, lead you up the tree lined avenue, and then you have an opportunity to take photographs with the horses and hounds, and then generally assist us get the hounds out of the hotel because they've great taste and all they want to do is get into the property. And um, so this will just give you some aerial views. Uh, like some people say, God, the weather in Ireland. Look, you don't come to Ireland for the weather. We can have four seasons in every day. But I tell you one thing, every season is just as spectacular as the other seasons in Ireland. And the next couple of images will show you why. So Christmas at Adair, it's just magical to have that holiday season. We do get a little bit carried away, to be fair. Uh, we put up a lot of Christmas trees um, and we just really get into the spirit of Christmas. And then this was just taken back in February. So it'll just show you how the seasons change in Ireland. You know, you go to bed. Isn't it just the most stunning? Yeah, I thought the first the first aerial, uh, aerial image was my favourite until this was taken back in February and I just think it's breathtaking. So it just shows you how much, you know, the landscape can totally change overnight. Uh, we've lots of lounge areas in the hotel where you can relax, just read a book by the fire if you like, or we, you know, serve different culinary delights throughout the day. We've got private rooms and um, so the libraries for that beautiful private family occasion. We have two restaurants, one which was, is a Michelin star restaurant, which we're very proud of, the Oak Room. Um, and then we have three different bars, the Tap Room, which is the top left, which we're coming live from today. And then the bottom right is our exquisite wine cellar. So the most experiential part of this room is you actually get to go back of house to get into this space. Um, and I just think it's very unique that you get to go down the back corridors where the team are when they're not out on the floor and you get to see all the little nooks and crannies um, down there. We've got a cinema for, for kids, which they absolutely adore because we have a Disney movie on every day. And then this is where you'll have breakfast in the Minstrels Gallery, which is actually based on the Hall of Mirrors in Versailles. And it's the second longest um, hall in Ireland and no photograph does it justice. You have to see it to believe it. We have larger rooms for those magical special days. And then we have 104 bedrooms in the castle. Um, so different bed configurations, some if you're traveling on your own, some if you're traveling in pairs, or if you're traveling with an extended family, we've lots of interconnecting options or that pull out sofa bed, 
or the two beds if you want to have the kids in the same room as you. Regardless of which category, the views on the 842 acre estate is absolutely exquisite from each bedroom. And then we have incredible ornate suites, as you can see here as well. And then just a three minute walk from the hotel, we were golf clubhouse. Um, so very casual brasserie style affair. Again, fabulous for families or for golfers. Lots of different nooks and crannies over there. And then activities. Well, hopefully we have something um, to suit everybody's taste. One of the big elements of Adair is our golf course, which we completely redesigned when we were closed um, those couple of years ago. And when we redesigned it, it was actually redesigned by an American architect, Tom Fazio. And when he redesigned it, he put this technology underneath the golf course called Sub Air. So the interesting thing about this is it's only under a handful of handful of golf courses in the entire world. And basically what it does is when it rains in Ireland, which only happens on occasion, it will control the moisture so it can suck the water from underneath your greens. So that part of your golf course is bone dry all year round. So because of the investment that's gone into the golf course, we're super excited to host the Ryder Cup in 2027. But you don't have to, you know, enjoy or play golf to stay at Adair. We have a whole host of other activities. So we have complimentary bikes for our guests. We do horse and carriage rides around the 842 acres. We have gun dog lessons. You would run away with the dogs. They're just amazing. Falconry, which is one of our most popular activities. We fishing on our own river, which flows right through the resort. And believe it or not, we launched our own mindfulness tours in February of last year. Um, so we've never needed those more than ever. We have archery on property. We just launched our new spa treatment this week called 111 Skin. They're only in about 30 spas in the entire world. Um, so we're super excited to have 111 Skin on board. We offer ski shooting, whiskey and wine tasting, any tasting with Ariel, who does it incredibly well. We've course riding. And then just last year, we launched the Paddle Club. So this has a 17 meter pool, sauna, steam room, two indoor paddle tennis courts, which is one of the fastest growing sports in the world right now. It has its own simulator room. We've got bar, yoga, you name it over there. And then a couple of more adventurous activities, not for the faint hearted. We have axe throwing, we have Bear Grylls Academy, and we also have blindfold driving. Or if you don't want to do it blindfolded, we have the off-road driving tracks also. And then if you're just looking for that extra little bit of space um, on the resort, we have two, three, and four bedroomed lodges and cottages. They're only a three minute walk from the hotel. Um, and they each offer their own bedroom with a private bathroom. You've got a city room, kitchen, dining room area. So great if you want to base yourself in the southwest of Ireland and tour around. Um, or if you're a golfer or a family, as I said, looking for that extra bit of space. So obviously the ladies can cater for all your requirements if you just want to, to get to, to Ireland as soon as possible. The exciting news for us is we will be allowed to reopen on June 2nd. We're literally counting down the days. Um, and then in terms of international travel, we are expecting um, an update from the Irish government later this week. So we do think it will happen at some stage over the summer. We're just waiting to get that date. So we just can't wait to welcome guests back to the resort. Anyway, enough from me. We're really here <laughs> to hear from Ariel. Um, so Ariel's been with the resort since prior to reopening back to 2017, originally from Poland. He's won gold at the World Championships and competed against 65 countries. So I can't compete with him on his cocktail making experience. It's just phenomenal. So I'll hand you over to himself. Good evening, ladies. Welcome, welcome, we're excited. I hope you are very well. Uh, my name is Ariel and today I'm gonna make uh, four cocktails or maybe five if we have time, uh, something easy, something tasty, uh, something with fancy glasses. <laughs> I, uh, I have my fancy glass. I just don't have your mixing capability. <laughs> maybe I, I, I use the international gym. You're OK, Julian, for that? Because if we need to repeat the cocktail, that's, that will be something, you know? Um, the first, we need make nice eyes which I have this here to make the ice ball. Oh, 
and we chill the glass first. Very important. After, we need to add 40 milliliters of uh, gin. Fifteen milliliters of uh, orange liquor. You can use uh, Quanto or Grand Mariner. After we have lovely uh, lemon juice, uh, twenty-five milliliters. You can use the squeezer. Next is the homemade um, jasmine tea cordial, uh, which is very easy to make. If you like, uh, Julian, I can uh, send the recipe. It's only uh, 25 milliliters. And finally, we have lovely orange uh, marmalade from Eder. On brand area, I love it. <laughs> And the ice, I'm sorry. As it's ready. It's ready. Beautifully ready. round and spherical. Everybody needs one of those machines at home. Yeah. Lovely. Agreed. You, okay. might, you might be short one in the morning area. <laughs> I'll try to have only one. Oh. And now it's ready for shape. Got some ice. Drop the shaker and hard shake for like ten seconds. Okay. Take out the ice from the glass. That's when you say shaken, not stirred. <laughs> yeah. okay. We can use double strainer because we don't want any ice in this cocktail. Okay. We can put lovely ice ball inside. Oppa, sorry. So Jillian, you're gonna have to sample because I don't have a straw long enough to go from Detroit to to your manner. <laughs> you <just> suggest us. <laughs> uh, for garnish, we can use this lovely. Uh, I don't know if you can see. Mm. I'll, I'll bring it over because I think it's exquisite the way it's been done. Gorgeous. Yeah. So pretty, like a beautiful flower. And we can put like that. And we can finish with orange zest. It nearly looks too good to drink, Ariel. And the cocktail is ready. Thank you so much. That's the first one. So I have a question. You said you had a special um, ingredient that you put in there that you you said you could send a recipe out for so we can send yeah. it to the guests. That's, to that's the mean, that's mean uh, tea cordial. Okay. It's, so it's got jasmine in it. Okay, wonderful. Uh, yeah. What could be used instead of that? Could something be used instead of that? Honey. 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 Okay. Honey. Honey. Okay. Very, very. Uh, Perfect. I think it'll be close, yeah. Hmm. Uh, maybe the second cocktail is uh, with gin again. Use this beautiful glass. Uh, wow. Fun. It's like a little bird. Yes. <laughs> And uh, fresh raspberries. We need like six. Oh, those are my favorite. Now I'm really wanting to be in your cellar. <laughs> Copy the summer. Uh, after gin again, maybe this time we're using Roku gin, the international gin from Japan. Love the bottle. It's very nice, huh? Beautiful. We need uh, 40 milliliters. Uh, 
30 milliliters of egg white. Forty milliliters of uh, uh, rhubarb cordial. Did you say rhubarb? Yes, I can send the recipe as well if you like. Yes. And uh, fresh lemon juice. Oh, this is going to be a good one. This is right up my alley. I'll have you know. These are all the favorite ingredients. I will taste them all for you and let you know. <laughs> Actually, I can taste them. And now it's very important. We need to uh, uh, use dry shake. Doesn't mean we need shake without ice. But here I have a lovely blender. I don't know if you can see. And I can use this blender. Yep, we saw it. And I got lovely foam. I don't know if you can see this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the quietest blender I've ever heard. And now we need up the, the ice and shake again. Okay. We need some straw. Okay. And garnish. Wow. Very nice. It's like way too pretty to touch it. It's very nice, huh? it's, uh, <laughs> it's gorgeous. Uh, next. This cocktail won a gold medal in national cocktail competition. It's called the Japanese Garden. To make this cocktail, we need to use uh, a star of Bombay, 40 milliliters. After we can use uh, dry wine. I actually love that wine. Yeah. <laughs> it's a gorgeous wine. <laughs> Sorry, blonde. 25 milliliters like this. Uh, fresh, uh, fresh lemon juice, 20. The scissor is here. Uh, I might be able to recreate these with the ingredient list, but I don't have these wonderful glasses that you're using. They're so beautiful. <laughs> oh, they're incredible. You can send the website. Uh, yeah, I, I just love them. It's nice, no? Keep them, let's keep them. Yeah. And um, yes, we have uh, we have wine, we have uh, gin, we have uh, fresh lemon juice, a matcha, uh, matcha green tea sugar syrup. It's from Monet. You can uh, get uh, everywhere this uh, mm -hmm. sugar syrup, uh, Amazon or eBay. We have 20 milliliters. From the same uh, the same uh, company, we have the Yuzu Pure Twenty. And uh, rice milk. Sixty milliliters of rice milk. Thank you. 
announce uh, all the very strange red milk uh, gin. It works very, very well. I know, I love that it tastes yes. amazing, Ariel. And we'll shake again for like 10 seconds. Okay, uh, double strainer. We have lovely color. Yes, it's beautiful. We finish with uh, lemon zest. And for garnish, um, I have lovely dried lavender. And this small tray with sugar flowers. And uh, scroll. The flowers are the garden. It's so pretty. It looks Plus. amazing. Just beautiful. Wow. Thank you so much. And we have one more to go. Very easy to make uh, at home. It's only honey, honey water, uh, gin, uh, fresh lemon juice, and a dash of soda water. We need to fill the glass. Fifty of gin, and it's a good uh, bomber. Fresh uh, lemon juice, thirty milliliters. I wish I could transport everybody, everyone here, because the smells coming from all of these different drinks is just incredible. I can't imagine. I am looking so forward to coming to the manor and having all these trying every one <laughs> i want to know how long of pra how much practice you had to do to learn all those fancy moves that look so elegant <laughs> that comes very naturally ariel yes exactly yeah. <laughs> how long are you actually doing this though as a profession 11 years wow yeah. okay well versed at this stage and uh, finally, we have honey water, which is uh, eight parts of, um, of honey and two parts of boiling water. And we need 25 milliliters. Okay. Again, we shake. Have some uh, ice cube, big ice cube, and we can make logo now, like this. I don't know if you can show this. I will touch it. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, is that the logo? Oh, beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. Wow, that's awesome. I know, right? An ice cube, a normal ice cube will never be the same again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And mm -hmm. uh, again, double strainer. We don't want any pieces of lemon.
small dash of uh, soda water. Just to make it a little fizzy. <laughs> Use with uh, lemon zest and for garnish uh, some dry uh, lemon. Lovely. Like Got to hand it to you. I definitely want to come right away now. <laughs> what is they your all look delicious. Ju June 9th, you said? <laughs> Seconds. We're counting down. We're counting down the days. Yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. Could you just recap the names of each of those drinks? Uh, this cocktail is, uh, is called the Japanese Garden. And actually, I don't have uh, names for these cocktails because I, I made these cocktails uh, yesterday. Ah, Just, wow. you know. They're special yeah. cocktails for when you come to Adair Manor. Wonderful. I'm, I'm going to look for them on the menu. You can put them on the menu and I'll be like, I was there when he was inventing them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So does anybody have any questions for Ariel? We were just having people ask for um, recipe information, but I know you can send that out afterwards. So that's why I kept interrupting you. <laughs> Not at all. We'll send that out so that uh, we can share it so that everybody can make the cocktails at home. Wonderful. Wonderful. And then we did have some questions about um, the manor as well. So uh, I guess I can start. Um, someone had asked in relationship to, um, they must have saw like the skeet shooting and things um, that are available on property. Do you also um, have the ability to set up like pheasant hunts and things like that? Or is that something they would have to do off property? Uh, there, there, there is hunts that you can do off property and we can point guests in the, in the right direction for that if they'd like to do that. Okay. Yeah, anything that we can't offer on property, you know, our concierge team are here. We've got an experience team, experiences team. So we're happy to assist with any of those queries for guests off property. Wonderful. I know, um, Mary had asked the panelists uh, as well um, if we are going to be planning an eat drink travel uh, group trip to Ireland and we definitely have Ireland on our list we haven't decided the timing because we were waiting for uh, the EU to come out with when obviously they were going to be um, opening everything back up uh, and it's my understanding each uh, government entity is coming up with dates and as uh, Jillian had mentioned uh, June 2nd is um, when everyone's going to be able to start coming in. And uh, you had touched on this a little earlier, Jillian. Do you know yet um, what type of uh, protocols are going to be in place while people are in the manor starting June 2nd? Do you have like um, reduced capacity, for example, when people are booking into the hotel or is there spacing or, or those kinds of requirements? Because right now we're hearing that some um, countries in Europe, as they're opening, are having, you know, maybe they're 50 or 60 percent capacity versus 100, that kind of thing. So as the 104 bedrooms that we have in the castle, we could sell all of them if we want to, but we've chosen not just like the last time um, so we'll go to about 70 percent capacity uh, on the resort and to be honest we're going above and beyond in all the measures that are required um, to keep our team as safe as possible and all the guests that are coming to stay with us but done in such a tasteful way that you wouldn't even know that this pandemic is is still among us all so like we don't use any yellow stickers or anything like that. It's all very tastefully done. You know, everybody has a temperature check when they come into the hotel. That's whether at the front door for our guests or back of house for our team members. Um, so everything, you know, even down to the bedrooms, if you don't want it to be serviced, nobody will enter into the room. It's entirely up to, up to you. Obviously you have two meter spacings in all of our restaurants. So like every measure is, is, is being met. 
and as I said, going above and beyond, but also just in a very softly, softly approach so that you can stay. That's probably one of our biggest feedbacks from when we were, you know, open last year, that people just forgot about what was going on around them, you know, so it was lovely. They felt extremely, extremely safe. Just touching on, as I said, Adair Manor's reopening on June 2nd. That's the Irish government have given Irish hotels uh, the date that they're allowed to reopen then. Um, and obviously at the end of this week, we will receive an update on when we can start allowing international travel again. So we believe, you know, among the EU that it will be from July 1st. However, each country has six weeks, I believe, to implement it. They're kind of the rumors that we're hearing right now, but obviously further clarification will come at the end of this week. So we're, we're very excited about that. Yeah, that's kind of, um, you know, what, what we've been sharing with our clients and our, our prospective clients, because of course we're all excited to return to travel. Let me just be very frank. <laughs> and some of us have been traveling, um, uh, for myself and I know uh, the other ladies, the other travel advisors, we've all traveled, whether domestically or to um, countries that are open to uh, U.S. Uh, citizens, because not everybody has been, obviously, but um, we're really, really excited about all of the different countries making their reopening announcements. So super excited to head back to Ireland and I cannot wait. It's going to be exciting for all of us. So, yeah, and we can't wait either. Honestly, we are so excited to have guests back on this resort. It should never have to close its doors and <laughs> God will never close its doors again. Yes. Yes. So ladies, did you have any other questions in the pan in through the panelist chat, I can't check it. So I don't know if any of you have seen anything else. Doesn't look like it. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, I am going to. How many days, Jillian, would you suggest? Oh, one second. I'm just. How many days would you suggest at the manor to get a good, a good sense of everything that's there and also be able to do any day trips or excursions? Great question. So our average length of stay would be between three and four nights. Uh, we would definitely not recommend one night. I think that's just a tease. You arrive, you leave the following day, you don't even get to explore the resort fully. Um, so definitely three to four days. One, because obviously there's so much to do on the resort. And then to have the village of Adair on our doorstep, that in itself needs at least half a day to explore. Um, and then there's so many day trips that can be done from Adair, whether it's the Ring of Kerry, the Dingle Peninsula. Um, so it, it, uh, definitely three to four nights. Perfect. Thank you. That's awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. This was wonderful. I'm thirsty. I want a drink. <laughs> it's not really suitable time here yet, but soon in a couple hours. It's five o'clock somewhere. We could go ahead and do it. Yeah, I, I think I might be trying to do my own mixology after after we get off the call. Um, those of you, uh, just again, if you didn't catch this at the beginning, I did put in the chat um, the information about uh, where you can find us on YouTube and how you can um, connect with us through our local meetup groups. And uh, you can copy all of the information in the chat by, uh, when you open up the chat box in the lower right hand corner, there's a little uh, box with three little dots. When you click on the three little dots, there's an option for you to save the chat. So you can do that. Uh, and then uh, have our information for the future. And again, as I mentioned, um, all of us have local meetup networking groups that we have, and we'll be posting future in-person meetup groups very soon. So keep your eye out for that. And thank you again, Carol and Jillian, uh, so much for spending your evening with us. And we look forward to seeing you next time for our next uh, virtual vacation. Yeah, and Ariel, thank you for the drinks. Yeah, Although Jillian, so I really much. think you need to try them before we're off camera. Thank you. I'm going to try them all now. <laughs> Very important. So a huge thank you for your time. We really appreciate both Ariel and I. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.